being an overcomer. Whatsoever may hinder us of being partakers of the benefits of being empowered, let us pray that the Lord will have mercy upon us in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will have mercy upon us in Jesus' name. Every hindrance, anything that the devil might use even to hinder us of the benefit of being empowered, of the benefit of being an overcomer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come against all sorts in the name of Jesus Christ. And last week, the, the person that took us through the study last week, you know, said one of the things, the things that causes um, the hindrances to living an empowered life is um, insufficiency of the word of God, ignorance, prayerlessness, sin, lack of infilling of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray that whatsoever any of these may be manifesting in our lives, anything that can hinder us of benefiting of the of being beneficiaries of this empowered life, that God will that God will have mercy upon us in the name of Jesus Christ. Every hindrance, every limitation, you know where you are lacking. Is it lukewarmness? Is it negative mindset? Is it insufficiency of the word of God? Let us pray. Whatsoever may hinder me from benefiting or even from this um, empowered Christian life or being a beneficiary of this empowered Christian life, that God will have mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. Every limitation, every hindrance, everything that can hinder me from benefiting of this empowered life, Father, I come against it in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, sin is one of the hindrances. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says, for sin shall not have dominion over you. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. I come against every besetting sin. Everything that can hinder me, O oh God, from being an overcomer, for living an overcomer, oh, overcomer's life, I come against such this evening. In the name of Jesus Christ. Brethren, I want you to pray this evening. I want you to pray, 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 and come against every hindrance, every limitation, everything that can hinder you from benefiting from this empowered Christian life that we are talking about this 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 month that God will give you grace to overcome such in the name of Jesus Christ father give us grace give us grace to overcome every sin every hindrance everything that is limiting us from you know benefiting from this empowered Christian life in the name of Jesus everything that is resisting us from being an overcomer father we come against it in the name of Jesus Christ father we pray that you will strengthen us you will empower us in jesus name glory be to your holy name in jesus mighty name we have prayed we're going to declare our victory now i read from psalm 43 verse 3 to 5 it says our forefathers didn't win these battles by their own strength or their own skills or strategy what was true the shining forth of your radiant presence and the display of your mighty power. You love to give them victory, for you took great delight in them. Now, you are my God, my King. It's now time to decree majesties for Jacob. Through your glorious name and your awesome power, we can push through to any victory and defeat every enemy. Um, that's uh, one of the benefits of living an overcomer's life. God backing you up to live to to be um, to live an overcomer's life to we're going to pray father we call upon you concerning ourselves we pray that we cannot win in our own strength we cannot overcome in our own strength let us ask for the favor of the lord for the strength of the lord in the name of jesus christ we ask oh god that you take the light in us in the name of jesus christ Father, take the light in us, O God, in the name of Jesus. The light in us that will make us overcomer in the name of Jesus. 
that will make us an overcomer in deep in Jesus name let us pray in the name of Jesus Christ that the Lord will shine forth his radiance presence upon us in Jesus name in the name of Jesus Christ father we pray that you will look upon us by your mercy and oh God grant unto us victory over every limitation over every hindrance into living an overcomer's life in the name of Jesus Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Every endurance, oh God, even to living an empowered Christian life. Father, we pray in Jesus' name that you will grant unto us victory in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare victory, oh God, in our finances, victory in our marriages, victory in our studies, in our careers, in every area of our lives. Father, we declare victory in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare victory in Jesus' name. Victory. Once you have victory, it's one of the benefits of an empowered Christian. In victory over powers of darkness. Victory over limitations. Victory over forces of darkness. That's one of the benefits of living an empowered Christian life. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Let us declare our victory tonight over everything that has limited us thus far, over everything that has empowered us thus far, over everything that has kept us beneath. Let us pray. Let us declare our victory tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Victory over every limitation in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Let us pray that the, the, that the Son of that, he's going to, that God is going to use for us this evening, that God will over fill him with your spirit, with his spirit, with his power in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray he will not speak of himself, but of God in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We exalt your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, our Savior. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. your name we give glory to you our king our strength our help our shield and our very great reward we adore you for who you are blessed be the name of our god he is worthy to be praised and adored So we lift up holy hands in one accord. We sing, Blessed be thy name. We say, Blessed be thy name. Come on, let's bless the name of the Lord together. As we sing, let's
the only lamb upon the throne, our redeemer, our savior, the one who understood the end before he created the beginning, praying for us every day in the presence of the father, the lamb. Father, we bless your name. We give glory to you. Every day, our Savior. Messiah is the King of Kings. Messiah is the Lord of Lords. God is the King. Messiah is the Lord of Lords. Messiah is the King of Kings. Ah. Messiah is the Lord of Lords. Are you happy to hear that? Messiah is the King of Kings. Ah, Jesus is the Lord. If you're happy, everybody sing hallelujah, hallelujah, say hallelujah. We're happy to sing hallelujah. We're happy to praise his name. Hallelujah. We're happy to worship him. Hallelujah. Yeah. Messiah is the King of Kings. Jehovah is the Lord of Lords. My Savior is the King of Kings. Jesus Christ is the Lord. Come on together. Alle, alleluia. Alleluia. Are you happy to praise him? Hallelujah. You should be praising the Lord now. Say, say, say to him, say. Hallelujah. Alle, alleluia. Happy that you are the King of Kings. So we say, Alleluia. Ah, Alleluia. Excellent is your name. Excellent is your power. Lord. Excellent is his name. Excellence is your name. The name Jesus Christ. Excellence is your power. Oh Lord, Lord, you are wonderful. Agar. Then what is that name? Let's say it together. His name is Jesus. Jesus, 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 J-E-S-U-S, -E he is the king. Together, let's go. His name is Jesus, uh, Jesus, 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 J-E-S-U-S, he is the excellent.
you today. Hey. Lift him up. Lift him up. Lift Jesus. Your Savior. Deliverer. Yeah. King of kings. Lord of lords. My healer. My lifter, hey, my Lord is good. Oh, I can hear you. Ah. Everywhere I go, I will live. In my dance, in my song, my God is good. Oh. I say, our God is great. Oh. Christ is great, our God is good. Oh. Everywhere I go, I will live. Let's do this. Say, His name is Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Indeed, Jesus is the King. He is our Savior. Amen. Let's begin to give God all the praise. Let's give God all the honor. Let's thank God for His faithfulness. Let's thank God for His kindness. Let's thank God for the privilege He has given to us, even to gather at His feet to listen to His word. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Be exalted forever and ever. Thank you, eternal rock of ages. Thank you, ancient of this. We we'll give you glory. We we'll give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. And so, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for another opportunity you've given to us, even to fellowship at your feet. Lord, we we'll worship you. We we'll give you all the praise. We we'll give you honor. We we'll give you adoration. Father, we we'll thank you for keeping our going out. We we'll thank you for keeping our coming in. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for all that you have done for us. Holy Spirit, we ask that you breathe upon us this evening in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask that your word will come with power and with manifestation in the mighty name of Jesus. That at the end of this meeting today, indeed, we shall all be empowered in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Please, let's have our seats. We welcome to church. Um, this evening in our divine instruction, we'll be looking at benefits of being empowered. Um, this month, our team in church is I can and also empowered. Um, we can't do anything if we are not empowered. It is what we have that we can give. So it is through the empowerment of God that we are able to do anything. It is through the empowerment of God that we can even lift our hands and lift our legs. So we've been taught about the understanding of empowerment. We've looked at various dynamics of being empowered. We look at the operations of being empowered, the hindrances, and today we're looking at the benefits of being empowered. I would like us to start by reading Isaiah chapter 40. We're reading from verse um, 28 to 31. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28 to 31. Isaiah 40, verse 28 to 31. It says... Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. 
he gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases, increases strength. Verse 30, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Here in this passage, we can see here that it is God that increases our strength. It is God that gives power to those that are weak. So that means our source of power is from God. Also, let's look at um, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. It's a popular verse that we all know, which is also the anchor scripture um, for this month as well. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. It says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. We can also paraphrase that to mean that we can do all things through Jesus that empowers us. So in this passage, it's emphasizing that Jesus empowers, Jesus strengthens. In the first one, it's talking about God empowering and giving might to us. Also, let's look at Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the hearts. Also in this passage, we see the Holy Spirit being the one empowering. It says, after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, that is when you receive power. So from the scriptures that we've read, it is evident that it is only through the Trinity. And by Trinity, I mean God the Father, Jesus, and Holy Spirit that we can get power or that we can be empowered. That means that any other access to empowerment, any other form of empowerment is corruption, it is rebellion, and it is evil. God is the sole you know, uh, producer of power because it is his nature. And we all know um, the foundation of this in the Garden of Eden, you know, when the devil came in form of serpent and came to deceive man that if you eat this fruit, you become like God. Man was already empowered by God, but the man hasn't realized that yet. But you know, devil being um, the kind of person he is, he has been banished from heaven because of what he has done as well. He also rebelled, and that's why he was chased out of heaven. And he was, he doesn't, devil doesn't want anybody to compete with him on the surface of the earth. So he's looking for how to take power out of man, and that's what he did to Adam and Eve. He was able to, you know, to, to deceive them. And the power that God gave unto man became corrupted because of, because of rebellion. So we need to understand that power is the nature of God. Power is the attribute of God. And once we've once, once we taken anything about God, we know that our God is dynamic. So that means power itself is dynamic. And that means we cannot, it's not something we can all phantom at all. You know, it's something that you only understand what you know about it. You can only talk about the ones you've experienced. And throughout the pages of the Bible, everything we can record about the, the manifestation of the power of God are the various dimensions that was revealed to those set of people. And that's why we'll see, possibly you see Elijah outrunning a chariot. That was a manifestation. You'll see another, another person being caught up like Philip. That is the manifestation. So those things. So it's possible that there are even other dimensions of power that, we not even, that we've not even experienced yet. So, but before we look into the benefits of being empowered, I would like us to understand why it is important for us, you know, as Christians to be, to be empowered. And uh, I would li like us to read um, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28, before we start talking about the benefits, um, the reason why it's important for us to be empowered. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28. It says, then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the, fishes, uh, over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the heads, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the heads. So God created man in his own image. 
in the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the hearts, subdue it, have dominion over the fishes of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And this is where God gave man the mandates of dominion. This is where God empowered man. He says, let us make man in our own image. Already we've established that power is the nature of God. So if God is making something in his own image, you know, that means power is inherent in that um, creation. So that means man is a creation of power by default. From the beginning, man is a creation of power. And everything that God created were put underneath man to have dominion over. So just like power is the nature of God, that means it's also a nature of man. Most of the times we don't realize the amount of deposits of God that we have in us. And because of circumstances around us, we tend to be afraid, we tend to fear things. And that is why when we see some victories, some successes, we we'll feel so happy, we we'll feel like, oh, it's my lucky day. It's not your lucky day, it is your nature. You are just manifesting what God has ordained you to be. And that's what God planned for us, that every day of our life should be like that. It's not just something you, you jump into by chance. It should be our nature. It should be a continual, you know, a, a continuous experience. So, the word of God confirmed that man was made in the image and likeness of God. So, wherever attributes I can attribute to God, for example, power, we can also see it in the life of a man. And even the scriptures, and that scripture confirms this, it says, you are God, you are the sons of the Most High. So, man itself has power in their nature. And the earlier we understand this, the earlier we start manifesting the power of God, and the earlier we start benefiting from this nature that God has given to us. So, as such, being empowered is non-negotiable for us. And this is something I want us to take away from here. It's not something we'll say maybe it's for some big men of God, it's for some apostles, it's for some, it's, it's, power is not limited to some special set of people. Power of God, being empowered, is non-negotiable for everyone that calls himself a child of God because it is part of you. The moment you give him back to, power is part of the package that you come to. So I don't want us to start thinking that I'm helpless, I don't have anybody to help me, I don't have the where with that. It's already in you. All you need to do is just to know, have the understanding, and steer up the power of God in you, and you'll begin to see wonders. I pray as we apply this wisdom that we begin to see wonders of the power of God in the mighty name of Jesus. So, the devil is also aware of this, and that is what the devil did, you know, to Adam and Eve. And that is why, till today, the devil is always fighting and always looking for subtle ways, you know, to deceive people that he knows that they are in alignment with God. Wherever you see any man that is in alignment with God, that you, then you see in power. You will see manifestation of power there. And we can see that in the pages of the Bible, even currently in the, in the current dispensation, where, wherever you see any man that is aligned with God, it's easy for them to demonstrate the power of God. And you know, because when, once, man is an, uh, once man is aligned with God, you know, they begin to fulfill that dominion mandate. It just happens naturally. It's only if you're not in alignment with God, that is when it becomes difficult for you to fulfill that dominion mandate. That's when it becomes difficult for you to, you know, to display the power that God has given to us. So now let's start looking at some, uh, at some benefits of being empowered. So the benefits of being empowered could actually be physical. It could actually also be classified or categorized as, you know, as spiritual. But we'll just be looking at it all together. And also, just to tell us, it's not, it's not something we can exhaust. Like I told you, the, the nature of God is dynamic. So we can't even exhaust the benefits, you know, of being empowered or of experiencing the power of God. The first one I would like to mention is being empowered brings about victory. It brings about success and overcoming. That's one major benefit of being empowered. Whoever is empowered by God will experience victory, will experience success. And several examples are later the, uh, are recorded in the Bible regarding this. If you look at Moses in Exodus chapter 3, it details when you know, God encountered Moses in the burning bush. And God says, um, I've seen the affliction of my people in Israel. Now I want to send you 
to go and bring my people forth. And Moses was like, God, you are, you are mistaken. How? Who am I to do that? And God said, no, go, I will, I will be with you. Let's look at just Exodus chapter 3, verse 10. The whole of that chapter 3 talks about that encounter, but Exodus chapter 3, verse 10 says, Come now, therefore, I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. This is God empowering. God says, come now, I will send you. That process is a process of empowerment. God wants to empower one man to bring out hundreds of thousands of people out of bondage. And we know how difficult Pharaoh was. It was when Moses himself got to the place, he discovered that this person is quite very stubborn. And, but God was able to empower us, uh, Moses to be able to, you know, to, to secure victory for the children of Israelites. And with that, he had success in that journey. He was able to bring them out of that bondage, even to the way of the promised land. Also, we can talk of Joshua as well, who took over from Moses. Because God empowered Joshua, he was able to experience the benefit of empowerment in victory and success. Uh, if we look at um, Joshua chapter 1, verse 5 and 7, Joshua chapter 1, verse 5 and 7. Or 5 to 7. It says, it says, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of our life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. It's saying that the same way I empowered Moses, the same way I will empower you, Joshua. It says, No man will be able to stand before you. This is God empowering the successor of Moses, even to continue to have victory on behalf of the children of Israel. It says, be strong and of good courage. For to these people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to, the, uh, to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and be very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the laws which Moses, my servant, command you. Do not turn right um, to the right hand or to the, or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This is talking about alignment. Already God has set a standard for us, the laws. Only if you align with this. It says, only be strong and courageous. What God is telling Joshua here is, understand that already you have the power to do it. You just need to build up that courage in yourself that, yes, indeed, I can do it. Because I've given you my promise that the same way I was with Moses, Joshua has seen how God worked with Moses. So if you can phantom the, the same way I was Moses, I will be with you as well. So that will give this person the courage to start seeing the benefits of being empowered. And Joshua was able to see that even at the point of time he was fighting a war and he was able to command the day, he was able to command the sun and the star to stand. And, and it was recorded that no one was able to do that after that again. So this is one of the benefits of being empowered. That person will experience victory, will experience success, will also overcome. We can also talk of Gideon as well. In Judges chapter 6, Gideon was somebody that doesn't see himself as being empowered. In Judges chapter 6, let's look at um, verse 12 to 16. Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6, verse 12 to 16. It reads, it says, And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. You can, you can imagine if an angel, that we all know how angels is, sometimes we will say, Ah, God, send your angel to come and scatter this place. And the angel is coming and says, God is with thou mighty man of war. The, the person was like, I think you're mistaken. I think you're talking to the wrong person. So that means the power of God is already on Gideon, but Gideon doesn't even recognize it. Let's look at verse, um, verse 13. And Gideon said to him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles? That means if indeed you said we are empowered, why is it that we've been suffering defeat in the hand of the enemy? And where is the evidence or the benefits of the empowerment that you talk about, which our father told us about saying, did not God bring us up from Egypt? Remember, we've talked about Moses bringing them out of Egypt. That was one of the manifestations 
of being empowered. And even here, um, Gideon was making reference to that, that if indeed God has empowered us, why is it that these people are, are making mess of the work of God in our life? Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of Midianites. Have I not sent you? Um, then verse 15 says, So he said to him, O oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. This is someone that, doesn't rea- that has not yet realized the magnitude of the power that God has deposited upon him. So he was looking down upon himself. But God was says, go in this power of yours, and you're able to save my people Israel. So whenever we we'll align and realize the power of God has been given upon us, what we experience as benefits is victory and success. And it is countless all true in the records we have in the Bible, David, and so on and so forth. Also, let's just quickly look at Obadiah um, chapter 1, verse 18. Obadiah 1, 18. Talking about victory and success. Obadiah 1, 18. It says, The house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame. But the house of Esau shall be stubble. They shall kindle them and defraud them, and no survivor shall remain of the house of Esau. So the fire and the flame that we'll see in this passage represents empowerment. So God has empowered the house of Jacob, he has empowered the house of Joseph, such that they become fire and flame. And we all know the power of fire and flame. Even sometimes water is even afraid of fire because it's able to lick up the water. And we also seen that also in the, in the passage when um, the prophet asked them to put water around the altar, several waters, and it was able to call down fire. And the fire of God was able to lick up. So when God makes someone fire and flame, God has empowered that person. And the result of that is that that person will have victory. And this is what God was telling, talking about the house of Jacob and house of Joseph here, that they shall kindle them and defraud them. That means they've been empowered to achieve victory and success. I pray in the name of Jesus that starting from now, we'll begin to experience the benefit of the power of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Also, another benefit of being empowered is that person will experience dominion. Dominion. Remember, we've talked about this in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. That was the mandate that God gave unto man. Once you are empowered, it is automatic that you have, you have dominion. Also, let's look at um, Psalms 1110, verses 1 and 2. Psalms 1110, verses 1 and 2. Um, it says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion, rule in the midst of your enemy. And this is also talking about dominion. It's talking about dominion because God has empowered, you know, Jesus in this case is able to sit. He says, sit here until I make your enemies your footstool. That means you have dominion over your enemies. So once we're able to realize that indeed God has given us the power, it becomes easy for us not to be afraid of those things that scares us easily. It becomes easy for us to appropriate that power of God for us to experience um, dominion. Also, if you look at um, Luke t- chapter 10, verse 19, also a popular one that we'll do, quote and talk about. Luke 10, verse 19. Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. If you look at this passage, even Jesus here was attributing power to the enemy as well. Remember, we talk about how devil fall. Devil 2, because it's a creation of God, it's also a creation of power. But the power that he has is already corrupted. It's not of God anymore. But here, God is t- telling us that he has given us power that is above the power of enemy, such that we are able to trample upon the devil. 
and that is the fear that devil used to have and that is where he will always come with those things to distract us away from realizing the power that God has given unto us so if only we, are, we can take cognizance of that it becomes easy for us to have dominion over the power of enemy it becomes easy for us to put the devil at his place I pray God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus another benefit of being empowered is that we have preeminence we have preeminence you know anytime people talk about preeminence we always think of ah, this is talking about Jesus this is talking about you know Christ but preeminence talk about a place of importance being first among your equals you know when the counting 10 or 5 people you, you are coming out of them outshining others it's called preeminence you're the one people will reckon with even, even among your mates let's look at um, Philippians chapter 2 verse 9 Philippians chapter 2 verse 9 it says therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name God has highly exalted him that means he's giving preeminence he's giving him parity over every other one so that is another benefit of being empowered God has given Jesus a name that is above every name and we might be wondering that this is referring to Jesus, but we also know that God's plan for us as his children is that we should be joint heirs with Christ. So wherever Christ himself is experiencing is what we should experience as well. In Romans chapter 8, verse 7, it talks about being joint heirs with Christ, being children of God. And by the virtue of being children of God or being sons of God, we are also joint heirs with Christ. That means whatsoever Jesus experiences, we can also experience the same thing. So if Jesus has preeminence, we can also have preeminence as well. Whatever influence, whatever status, whatever resources that Jesus enjoyed, we also have access to the same thing. The only thing we need is knowledge and for us to be able to appropriate this. Another benefit of being empowered is we'll be able to walk in the miraculous or in the supernatural. Anybody that has, that is empowered by God, will be able to experience the miracle of God, will be able to reproduce the miracle of God, will be able to experience the supernatural. And also we have a lot of these recorded in the Bible for us to, you know, to make references to. We can think of Moses when God gave him um, the staff that was in his hand. Remember the staff was what he was using as, as a shepherd in the bush. And God breathed upon that staff and it became a tool of miracle and supernatural for, for Moses. It was the same stuff that he was using to convince Vera that indeed I was sent by God to deliver his people. It was the same stuff that he stretched over the Red Sea that it parted. So because God has empowered him through that stuff, he was able to carry out the set of miracle. The same thing as well, like I said earlier, Joseph too was able to, you know, to, to demonstrate this, um, this benefits of miraculous let's look at joshua chapter 10 verse 12 to 13. joshua chapter 10 verse 12 to 13. then joshua spoke to the lord in that day when the lord delivered up the amorites before the children of israel and he said in the sight of Israel. Sun, stand still over Gibeon and moon in the valley of Aijalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the people had revenge upon their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Joshua? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and did not hasten to go down for about a whole day. This is another um, supernatural or miracle that someone was able to demonstrate because that person has been empowered by God. So Joshua in this passage was able to command, um, command the sun not to go down. He was able to command the day. And we can also do the same thing as well because if we realize that we're empowered, all we need to do is just to issue the command. And that situation or that element will definitely listen to us. All we need to do is to have faith in what we utter. <clears throat> also, in first king chapter 18 verse 46 first king chapter 18 verse 46 
talking about Elijah, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 46. It says, Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he gathered up his loins, and ran, ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel, because the hand of the Lord was upon this person. That means the empowerment of God was upon Elijah, and the result of that was that he was able to outrun you know, chariots. Remember, the chariots actually of a king would likely have the choices of horses, probably in fours or five or six and this. And also, if we know as well, there's a unit of power that is called horse power. So if someone, a man, is, was able to outrun like four or five horses, it shows that that person indeed has been empowered and is able to experience the miraculous or the supernatural. Also, um, Philip too was able to experience the same thing as well. After he ministered to the Enoch, because the Bible says he was caught up. Let's look at Acts chapter 8, verse 39. Acts chapter 8, verse 39. It says, Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away so that the eunuch saw him no more and he went on his way rejoicing this 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 is a supernatural you can imagine probably after you've preached to someone and the person accepted jesus and is accepted to be baptized and after baptizing something just made the person disappear out of your faith um also out of your face we can imagine that that indeed is is miraculous is supernatural but this happened as a result of these people understanding that they've been empowered by God and that is why they're able to walk in this in these dimensions also another benefit of being empowered is that you have clarity of vision you have clarity of vision and this is very important for us as child of God to be able to understand what God has in stock for us to be able to understand situation of things through the clarity of vision um, there's this account in Mark chapter 8 talking about the blind mind that Jesus healed Let's just read um, Mark chapter 8, verse 22 to 25. Mark chapter 8, 22 to 25. It says, Then um, he came to Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man to him, and begged him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eye and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. So at this stage, the power is not yet fully upon this person. But by the time Jesus finished with this man, by the time Jesus finished empowering this man, in verse 25, it says, Then he put his hand on his eyes again, and it made him look up. And he was restored and saw everyone clearly. There was clarity of vision. And this is what the empowerment of God can bring. This is the benefit of being empowered. You're able to see things clearly. You're able to have a clear understanding of God's plan for your life or for your family. And once you have clarity of vision, it becomes easy for you to walk in that direction. It becomes easy for you to pursue it because what you see as an influence in the energy you put into things. If you are convinced that a business, for instance, is going to work, then you put all of your effort into that. And that's what we call the clarity of vision. It is when we doubt or we are not sure of things, that is when we feel like maybe God has not called me into this ministry. Maybe God has not told me to do it. Maybe I was just too being forward. Then we tend to relax. And because of that, we think that maybe it's one of those things. Let me just go and try another way. But if we have clarity, if God indeed has revealed to us and we are sure about it, you become propelled. Even in the face of adversity, even when things don't you feel like, no, I was sure that God told me this is the way, then I will keep pushing. And the result of that will be that person being, uh, being empowered and seeing success or victory. So, benefit of being empowered brings clarity of vision. Also, um, there's this account of Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1, uh, verse 11 to 14. 
Jeremiah chapter 1, 11 to 14. It reads, it says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. So this is the word of God coming to a prophet. And we also we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the word of God being the power of God as well. It says, the word of God, that means the power of God came to Jeremiah and says, what do you see? So that means at that point, the power of God was upon this person. And he said, he saw a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. And what happens after this would, you know, it would give us an idea of what God was trying to do. God was trying to test if indeed this person has been empowered. He says, you have seen well. That means you have clarity of vision. Then, that means whatever I, I show you, then I'm ready to perform it. It's, it will it give this person that confidence that whatever he sees is up the corner that if I can see it, then God is going to do it. And that's what happened in the next verse, in verse, um, in verse 13. It says, the word of the Lord came to me the second time saying, what do you see? And I said, I see a boiling pot and it is facing away from the north. Verse 14 says, Then the Lord said to me, Out of the north, calamity shall break forth. It is unto the second time that God has confirmed this person has been empowered, has the clarity of vision, that God was able to interpret and give meaning to the things he was saying. So that means God is ready to perform wherever he is showing to his prophet. So anytime we are being empowered of God, the, one of the benefits we we'll see is that there will be clarity of vision. And once there is clarity of vision, there will be accomplishment, there will be success, and there will be victory. I pray this will be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Another benefit of being empowered is that there will be wisdom. The person will become very wise, intelligence, and superpower. Those are various um, descriptions of the same thing. Wisdom, intelligence, and superpower. So we know from the word of God already that the wisdom of God is the power of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24 it says christ is the power and wisdom of god first corinthians chapter 1 24 christ is the power and wisdom of god also in the in the, in the book in the bible there are various various people that through being empowered by god they're able to display the wisdom display the intelligence and the superpower of god daniel is is is, is one of such people that was empowered by god if we look at daniel daniel chapter 6 verse 3 Daniel chapter 6, verse 3. It says, Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. This is talking about the dimension of power of God that is manifesting as wisdom, as excellent spirit, as intelligence, as superpower. In the life of Daniel. Also, if we read Daniel chapter 1, verse 19 to 20. Daniel chapter 1, 19 to 20. It says, verse 19, Then the king interviewed them, and among them all, none was found like Daniel, Ananiah, Michelle, and Azariah. Therefore, they served before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in his realm. So this is the power of God being manifested in the life of Daniel and his um, colleagues in the form of wisdom. Remember in this passage, it talks about magicians, astrologers. They also have their own powers, but their own power is the corrupted one. But one thing we must have an understanding, and this will help us as Christians to live a life of victory. The power that we have access to in Christ is beyond that of the enemy. Because God himself, like I said earlier, is power by nature, and he has deposited that DNA upon us. So anytime we have that understanding and that knowledge, we will not be afraid of wherever the enemy is trying to flash in front of us. And this is what happened to Daniel here. With, with, through the power of God, through the empowerment of God in his life, that he had with him, that wisdom was ten times better than that of the magicians and the astrologers. 
Another person that manifested in this dimension was, uh, was Solomon as well. In 1 Kings chapter 4, um, let's look at verse 29 to 31. 1 Kings chapter 4. Twenty-nine to thirty-one. It says, and God gave Solomon wisdom and exceedingly great understanding, exceedingly great understanding, and largeness of heart, like the sand on the seashore. This is God giving Solomon wisdom. Thus, Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the men of the east and all the wisdom of Egypt, for he was wiser than all men, than Ethan the Ezraite, and Eman, and Chakol, and Dada, the sons of Mahol, and his fame was in all surrounding nations. This is the empowerment of God reflecting in the life of Solomon in the form of wisdom. It, says it was beyond what everyone has, and that's why we talk about preeminence. So if you are counting a group of people that has wisdom. In this case, Solomon was above all of them. He has preeminence in wisdom. And this is the benefit of being empowered by God. And we all know how Solomon got to this junction. He just got, uh, got to be the king and made sacrifice. God gave him what you want. And he asked for this. And God says, indeed, I'm going to give you that. The same thing was also recorded in Second um, Chronicles chapter 1, verse 10 to 12. Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 10 to 12. It says, now give, me, now give me wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before those people. For who can judge this great people of yours? Then God said to Solomon, because this was in your heart, and you have not asked for riches or wealth or honor or the life of your enemies, nor have you asked long life, but you have asked for wisdom and knowledge for yourself, that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you. So this is God empowering um, Solomon with wisdom and knowledge. The same thing, another person that also um, excelled in this dimension is Bezalel in Exodus chapter 31. Um, Bezalel, Exodus chapter... 31, verse 1 to 7. We'll just quickly read through that. Exodus 31, verses 1 to 7. It says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of all of the tribe of Judah, and I have, I have filled him with the Spirit of God. Remember, we'll talk about the Spirit of God giving people power. In wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, in all manner of workmanship, to design artistic work, to work in gold, in silver, in bronze, in cutting jaws for setting, in, in carving woods, and to work in all manner of workmanship. And I, indeed, I have appointed with him Aholiab, Ahol the son of Aisha Mark, and of the tribe of Dan, and I have put wisdom in the eyes of all the gifted artisans that they might make all that I have commanded you. So this is God empowering people with wisdom to be able to design innovative things that has not been done before. So that is one of the benefits of being empowered. There are other examples in the Bible that but time will not permit us to, to look at that. Another benefit quickly of being empowered by God or living a life of empowerment is boldness and influence. You'll be, you'll be bold act like lion and you have influence. If you see anybody that is conscious of being empowered, they are always bold. And it doesn't matter the source of the power, the corrupted one or the one from God. They are always bold and they have influence. And that is why it's, we're saying that we need to be aware of this thing. So we are not always timid in, in front of situations so that we'll be able to display and express the, the things that God has put in, into our care. If indeed God has empowered you, you must be bold. And especially this affects us as Christians in the place of witnessing to other people. If indeed we receive the power of Holy Ghost, then it becomes easy for us to witness to people with boldness. And this is what um, Apostle Paul and Peter and others experienced as well. So talking about influence, um, Solomon 
Uzziah and Jesus, the Bible recorded about them that their fame spread wide. Their fame spread wide. People that are empowered, that have influences, people who hear and know about them, run about. And this is talking about the Bible characters, even in our contemporary words. The, people, uh, the servants of God, the ministers of God, that indeed we know that they are working in dimensions of God. You will, once you mention their name, so, oh, I know that man of God. That is influence. People around their territories will know their name because indeed they are demonstrating and experiencing the power of God. So it comes with boldness and with influence. Talking about um, boldness in Acts chapter 2, verse 14. You know, Peter received the boldness after they've waited upon God and the baptism of the Holy Spirit has come upon them and he was able to preach and thousands were able to give their life and they were converted because the power of the Holy Ghost has come upon them and there was a deposit of, of boldness. Also talking about um, Apostle Paul as well in Acts chapter 9 verse 29 also on that account in Acts chapter 28 verse 31 they were able to preach with boldness because they were conscious that they have the power of Holy Spirit in them another um, benefit of being empowered is greatness and leadership traits there's this account of this young king a teenage king Uzziah in 2nd Chronicles uh, chapter 26 in verse 1 and verse 15, it says, God empowered this person that it became very strong. It says, God helped him until it became very strong. Let's look at um, Second Chronicles quickly. Second Chronicles chapter 26, um, verse 15. And he made devices in Jerusalem, invented by skillful men, to be on the towers and the corners, to shoot arrows and large stones. So his fame spread wide and spread far and wide, for he was marvelously helped till he became strong. So this is the empowerment of God. It made this person become strong, become uh, became great. So that is what um, the empowerment from God can do to one. It makes you become great. It makes you to have leadership traits. Also, David is also another example we can think about. Moses, the same thing as well. Joshua, and so on and so forth. So they're able to manifest in greatness and they have leadership traits. Another benefit of being empowered is that you have authority. We all know that authority is also another dimension or another um, dynamics of power. And it is the dimension of power to enforce things. So it's not just enough for us as Christians to have power, but there's also another dimension of power, which is authority. Authority helps you to enforce things. And as Christians, this is what God has designed us to be, to enforce the law of God, to enforce the kingdom of God upon the face of the heart. In Job chapter 22, verse 28, it says, You shall decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you. Also, um, the account of Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1, it says that, By my word, there shall be no rain. It was enforcing the word of God, and that is authority. This, these are people that they realize and they are very sure that they've been empowered by God. It becomes easy for them to declare it in, and they are very confident that whatever they say is what will happen. Another benefit of being empowered is that you able to, you will be able to command respect. You'll be able to command respect. There was also this account in the Bible of the son of um, I've forgotten the name now, talking about it says, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Who are you? So those, were, they were able to command, even the demons knew them that these people, I, I don't go near them. They're able to command respect because of the power of God. Because of the power of God, you're able to command respect. And just for this lesson today, last but not the least, another benefit of being empowered that is for us to fulfill purpose and destiny in God. That is the major reason why God has empowered us from beginning. It's for us to become what he has destined us to be. So that is another benefit. If indeed, we are empowered. It becomes easy for us to fulfill purpose and to fulfill destiny in God. And we can see also various examples in the Bible. David, Jesus, Cyrus, they all you know, be able to fulfill their purpose. So whoever God empowers is likely to experience most of these benefits I've listed. And if you look at the Bible and even our contemporary world, we will see people that have that are actually they are empowered, they are mostly influential, they are most they command respect, they are great people, they have authority, they are very bold, like I've mentioned earlier. Most of them are wise and intelligent and very successful. 
So if indeed we've been empowered, most of these attributes, most of these benefits will play out in our life. And it's not as if as Christians that we are not seeing these things. It's just that we've not been taking note of it. And that's why when we notice a few of it, we become very happy and say, oh, yes, I was able to do ABCD. It's part of what God has the Son us to do as his own people. I pray that this evening God will empower us afresh in the name of Jesus, that the power of the Spirit of God will rest upon us afresh, and it will be for empowerment in the name of Jesus. I would like us to just rise up as we take this prayer point. Let's thank God for the word of God has come to us. Let's pray that the word of God shall be for empowerment in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we we'll thank you for your word has come to us expressly. We ask that your word will empower us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's pray. Let's say, Father, let your spirit rest upon me for empowerment, that I may experience victory, that I may experience success, that I may experience wisdom, that I may experience clarity of vision, that I may command respect, even in the realm of the spirit. Father, let your spirit rest upon me for empowerment. Let's begin to pray that prayer, that the spirit of God will rest upon us for empowerment, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let your spirit rest upon us in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you will empower us, O God, for boldness, for influence, for wisdom, for intelligence, for superpower, in the name of Jesus. Empower us, O God, for clarity of vision, in the name of Jesus Christ. Grace to walk in the supernatural. Let us pray that the Almighty God will release upon us in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we pray. Grace to walk in the supernatural. Father, release upon us in the name of Jesus Christ. Grace, O oh God, even to our power above, O oh God, our enemies. Father, please release unto us, O oh God. Let your power be made real in our lives. Let your name alone be glorified in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for your divine empowerment in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to your holy name. Divine empowerment for victory, for good success. Father, grace to overcome. Father, we pray that you release upon us in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let us pray for the vessel God has just for us this evening that the Almighty God will empower him afresh in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that you will fill him with your spirit, O God, from on high, in Jesus' name. Every virtue that has gone out of him this evening, Father, we pray that you replenish in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray, O God, for your son. Father, we pray that he will live in the supernatural in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that you will make him, O God, a man of influence in Jesus' name. Let your name alone be glorified. Grant unto him dominion, mm. dominion over enemies in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, O God, even for the, for the spirit of preeminence upon him in Jesus' name. Grace for superiority, O God, to surpass all others. Father, we pray that you re release upon him, upon his family. And let your name alone be glorified. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Um, thank you, Jesus. So we're going to give our offering right now. And let us package our offering. And let us appreciate God even for... Offering is... Um, bringing our offering to the Lord is an act of worship. And it is wisdom to give our offering. That's one of the benefits of um, empowered life that we talked about this evening. Let us give our offering, package our offering, and give unto the Lord this evening. Amen.
Father, we bless your holy name. We thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you for out of the abundance that you have given unto us. We have, oh God, returned this unto you. Father, we pray that you will accept us. Accept our offering, oh God. Let it be a sweet smelling savour unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will bless us, oh God, in return. And let your name alone be glorified in the name of Jesus we we'll pray as we go this evening that your presence, O oh God, will go with us in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Father, we we'll pray in Jesus' name that in, as we have lifted up our voices and prayers unto you, O oh God, this evening, O oh God, Father, we we'll pray in Jesus' name that we shall be overcomers in the name of Jesus Christ, that we are empowered in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We, are, we glorify your holy name for in Jesus mighty name we have prayed amen shall we share the grace in fellowship sorry before the grace don't forget tomorrow we are having a naming ceremony uh, of our brother's uh, newborn the brother who led us in uh, the bible study this evening we're having a naming ceremony tomorrow 4 30. We're leaving here at 3 o'clock and the naming ceremony is scheduled for 4 p.m. Okay, please do well to join us. God bless you in Jesus' name.